Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. This is the Anchor Make M5, and today I wanna to tell you about all the things that I don't like about it and why I'm still excited about this 3D printer. So if you're not familiar with the Anchor Make, this is a brand new 3D printer that launched over on Kickstarter by the folks over at Anchor, and it's their first iteration of a 3D printer that they're releasing out in the wild, and it prints pretty dang fast compared to most standard bed slingers out there out of the box without any modifications or upgrades needed. And as of right now, it is the most funded 3D printer Kickstarter campaign of all time at 8.8 .8 million. That is just an insane amount of money there. And it's got some pretty cool things baked into it like auto bed leveling, a camera, a mobile app. It's supposed to have some AI tech built into it and we'll talk about that here in a minute. And it's got a build volume of 235 by 235 by 250 millimeters. Today's video is not being sponsored by Anchor in any ways. I've just had the chance to play around with this for the past handful of months and I have been using it almost daily for almost all of my Etsy orders that I've been fulfilling and wanted to go over all the things that I just don't like about the machine and again, the things that I really do like about it. So what I'm not here to do is debate with anybody on whether or not you should buy this or consider it after it actually launches. What I really wanna do is just express some of the uh, issues that I've run into while working with this or just in general things that I don't like about the printer in hopes that it might be able to get resolved before the production units of this actually ship out to backers of this printer over on Kickstarter. So I'm gonna jump right into this and the very first thing that I'm gonna call it is something that you might actually hear if you listen closely and that's the fan. Yeah, that fan is constantly running as long as the printer is on. If it's not doing anything, that fan is still running. If you finished a print, that fan is still running. Ideally, I would not like that fan running 24 seven as long as I've had this machine powered on. I'm really hoping there is an easy firmware fix for this as well as a lot of the things that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. But the next thing I wanna talk about is actually the touchscreen display and the file interface. I've run into a number of issues. The touchscreen itself works fine and is very responsive, but the actual file selection, there's some really odd, hard to replicate issues that I've run into while using the machine. One of which is randomly, sometimes files won't load correctly if they have a space in the file name. That's as far as I can tell. It sometimes works, sometimes just does not work. Another one is if you have your G-code files loaded on an external USB type C drive that you can plug into the printer, which by the way, they've confirmed does not come with this because they have eight gigs of onboard storage for the printer that you'll be able to wirelessly send files from the, from the slicer, the AnchorMake slicer to the printer. I haven't been able to test that because I don't have access to the slicer, so can't really see how well that works. Also, another thing before I get to the little SD card here is I have no clear idea of how you actually transfer files from the card here or your, your external drive to the onboard storage. I can't really find a way to do that and it just sort of randomly moves the file over from time to time. But there seems to be this weird issue with the file sizes or the number of files that you load onto the external drive and plug into the printer where it just won't display all the files at random. And sometimes this again works and other times it just doesn't. It's very, very odd. So I've just ended up deleting files that I'm not using, loading the new ones on there and that's how I've gotten around it. Another thing is they're not filtering out hidden files files that are displayed on the screen. So you're seeing a lot of excess garbage when looking at the file selections on the screen. Another thing that I'm really hoping that they'd be able to address with a firmware update is having some sort of a visual of the file that you're selecting on screen. But I would love it if it actually gave you some sort of a visual, either after you've clicked on the name and it displays a visual of what that sliced file is that you're about to print or prior to it having a thumbnail view option versus just a list view of all the files. Now the next one is a basic one, but I would love it if there was a preheat option built into the printer so that I could come in here and preheat the extruder as well as the bed to a particular temperature so that it was all prepped and ready for me to run off 
off and print something. And I would love it if that was a menu option somewhere on there that I could just start the process ahead of time. Because I sometimes I know I'm gonna run off and print something, but maybe I want to swap out the filament or I just wanna prep the machine prior to actually running off and printing something. Again, very minor, but it would be nice to see that added into the menu system. Speaking of heating up the printer, they do have commands baked in that'll allow you to heat up the extruder and purge out material. The naming convention, again, I think I brought this up in my initial video, is just a little odd, and I'm hoping that they change that, uh, as well as the retract option is uh, there, but it's just named kind of odd. But one issue that I currently have is that it's kind of tricky to load the filament in all the way through from the side down to the extruder. It's this odd issue where if you don't have it cut precisely right and the filament tip bent entirely perfectly, it's not gonna slide all the way through. Now I did see a Kickstarter campaign update where that they did mention that they have modified that slightly. So that's a great thing to see. So hopefully that addresses this particular issue that I'm seeing on this unit. Another thing that's a little annoying with the machine is that every time you wanna go to start a print, you have to choose from two options, default, or efficient. Efficient is supposedly gonna print faster on straight lines. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me and honestly I think is a little bit confusing. I would honestly prefer if that wasn't even an option at all. If I hit print on a file, it starts the print process and then those could be sub options after I've started the print because what has ended up happening is I've hit print walked away, come back 10 minutes later to check on the print, and it still hasn't done anything because I didn't select one of those menu options. This machine is rather loud, and it's a good bit louder than I would expect it to be. I know they've said that they have TMC drives on this, but maybe it's not on this model that I have currently, and it's gonna be on the production units. It's just a good bit louder than what I was expecting for a machine like this. Also, after your print has completed, there's no print again option. Come on, I want to be able to run the same file over and over and over again for my different Etsy orders, and I have no way of doing that. So when a print finishes, I have to go all the way back, reselect the file, which depending if I have three pages of files, I have to cycle through those three pages to find the file and print it again. That should just be something that's right there on the screen after my print's completed, showing me the print completion time, progress, and then a print again option. I also wanna talk about the build plate itself. So this is a magnetic build plate. It works really well. Prints stick to it pretty decently. I've had some that have come loose during the print process, which is why on one side, I've started using glue sticks. So if I have some projects that don't really have a wide base, I might end up using it on the glue stick side here and it just adheres a little bit better. But this is a textured surface on both sides. And while it does work, pretty well, I don't like that surface finish on all of my prints and I would love it if there was a smooth option. Now, given this is just a magnetic build plate and it does have auto bed leveling, you could in theory just slap on something like a wham bam build plate here on the printer and be done with it and then you have a completely smooth side or textured or whatever the build plate is that you want. I just wish that this had maybe one side that was textured and one side that was smooth. Another odd one that grinds my gears, uh, plan words here, is that depending on how you have the bed positioned, if you go to home the printer where you're starting a print, the bed will move and just start grinding away until it catches itself and then stop. Obviously would prefer if it did not do that. Now, one of the big ones for me that I just haven't seen anything really on other than a few screenshots and a, a video that they posted on the Kickstarter campaign is more information about the actual Anchor Make slicer that you're gonna need to use in order to be able to capture some of the other functionality that they're touting for this machine, like the AI supported camera or the time-lapse features that it will automatically record your 3D prints. Currently, I've been using Simplify 3D for slicing all of the files that I've been printing with this machine using a modified version of a profile that they provided to me because they didn't have a version of their slicer available when I initially made my videos. And as far as I know, they still don't have that available for testing or anything like that. Uh, I would love, absolutely love, 
to test that out and provide some further feedback to that because the whole slicing experience is another really important part of your overall printing process. And if it's not a smooth one and it can be quite painful depending on which slicer you're using, it's just gonna overall be a bad experience for anybody out there, especially if it's their very first time trying to 3D print something. Also, the printer does have wireless capabilities baked into it. So in theory, you could slice your file in the uh, Anchor Make slicer and then wirelessly send it to the printer and store it, I'm assuming, in that onboard storage on the printer. However, I've just not been able to test that out and see how it actually works and would love to be able to do that because currently I'm storing and slicing everything on one of the uh, SD cards here and plugging it into the printer to print anything. Also, as far as I know, we've literally seen nothing on the AI recognition with the baked in camera. So I have no idea if that's actually something that they've built out or whatnot. It's just like at this point has been a promise as part of that Kickstarter campaign, but would love to see that in action. And honestly, if Anchor, I'm assuming you guys are gonna be watching this, would love to actually see some of these things in action. Like please do a live stream showing the slicer in action where it's at today. Uh, show off the, the AI camera and it actually detecting a jam or maybe not a jam, but a print failure or something along those lines would be incredible to see. And another one that was a big bummer that I found out is that the actual time lapses that you can make with the camera are tied to the slicer for some reason. I don't know why that's the case. I feel like if this thing is just printing, regardless if I've sliced the file in Prusa Slicer or Simplify 3D or Cura or Anchor Make, it should be recording the time lapse of that 3D print directly onto either the internal storage or the external storage that you plug into the printer. I will also mention for the mobile app, that worked really well on my iOS device and it was a beta version of that. So far that's worked pretty well, I don't have access to it anymore because the beta period expired and I no longer can access the app. But overall that experience connecting to it and being able to access the camera and control the printer right from my phone worked really well. And then the last complaint that I have is something that I honestly haven't been able to test and because I don't have access to, is their multicolor system that they were touting at the end of their campaign. I'll have to go back and double check. I don't know if anybody actually bought into that. I'm sure some folks did, but as far as I know, all we've seen is renders of that. Again, this would be one of those things that Anchor, if you're watching, please do some live streams, post some content, post some videos of the multicolor system up and running. I, people would love to be able to see that. I'd be very interested to see how that all connects to this machine because I honestly can't envision how it's gonna connect to it and how the machine is gonna know that you're using the multicolor system. I don't, I honestly don't know, but it seems like it'll be cool. If it actually occurs, that's great. I hope it works really well. I did not back that, full disclosure. I uh, backed just the standard printer itself and very, very excited to actually get my production unit so I can do a full review review for you all. So those are all the things that I just honestly have not liked while using this printer over the past few months. And again, hoping some of those can be addressed because most of them seem like they're software, firmware related with the printer or tied directly to the upcoming slicer, etc. But one thing, if you've been paying attention, hopefully noticed is I didn't mention anything about issues with the prints because this thing prints so well and is so reliable when it comes to 3D printing things compared to most of the other machines that I've used out there. This thing just works and I love it. I've probably had a handful at most of print failures on this machine over the last three months. I think I've had two clogs. I've changed the nozzle on the extruder once and that was just so I could change it to see what the process was like, uh, which was very easy and it works great after auto leveling again. Auto leveling is super simple. Uh, just the overall, like actually printing something is so easy to use. The most important part of this printer, which is actually printing is so good and I'm so happy with the results that I'm able to get off of this machine. And yes, it does print significantly faster than most 
of my other 3D printers that I own without having to mod anything whatsoever. You get it out of the box and you set it up. And I know people in the comments will be like, Uncle Jesse, but I can print just as fast on my modified Ender 3 with a crazy new extruder and these fans and this drive update and these whatever thingamabobs. I don't wanna do any of that. That's like the last thing on earth that I wanna do is start modifying printers. I just want to be able to take them out of the box, slice a file and hit print and it prints reliably. And if it can print fast, that's great. Is it as fast as the bamboo X1 carbon? No, it's definitely not as fast as that machine. Does it print as good, if not better? Yeah, does it print better than most of my other FDM 3D printers? Yeah, it does. What I'm trying to get to is that this machine is easily becoming one of the most reliable printers that I've been able to work with when it comes to just continuously being able to print things. And some of the issues that I have with it are just down to the actual software, firmware baked into the machine. I guess what I'm trying to say is this printer is just becoming one of the more reliable machines that I have access to. And I'm very excited to see the final production units rolling out so that I can compare what I have received pre-production to what I purchased as long, uh, along with a lot of you out there to see how that stacks up against this. Because if it's anything like this, I will be so happy and I think a good number of you out there will be happy as well, especially if a number of these issues that I'm calling out here in today's video can be addressed. I don't think a lot of them are major. A lot of them are just software, firmware related things. But let me know down below what you think about the Anchor Make and what your concerns might be. Again. My key message here is just calling out things that I've seen over the past few months in hopes that those can be addressed before all of you out there that have decided to back this machine or are interested in buying one after it officially leaves Kickstarter and is available over on Amazon or Anchor's website or wherever it's going to be available. Uh, that some of those issues are addressed to make this the best possible printer that you can work with. Hey, thanks so much for watching all. If you're interested in more information about my Patreon and things like my resin 3 printer settings, I have links to that down below. I do want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. And I also wanted to mention that I know a lot of you out there are very interested in me comparing the Bamboo X1 Carbon to the Anchor Make M5. And I for sure will be doing that here in the next week or so. Before the end of the month, I will definitely have that video up and running. But first, I need to actually get my Bamboo X1 video uh, up and posted here. Still doing some more 3D prints on that, and it's been a, a bit of a rocky ride so far <laughs> with actually getting things to print on that machine for me. Hey, thanks again for watching you all. I'll see you next time. Bye now.